Our first guest tonight is an Emmy-nominated actor who you know from Difficult People, American Horror Story, and Billy on the Street. He co-wrote and stars in the new movie Bros, which premieres in theaters September 30th. Let's take a look. I woke up laughing about you so rudely calling me out on my Well, you deserved it, bitch. Honestly, I was impressed. You may be more emotionally unavailable than I am. Well, maybe we can be emotionally unavailable together. Maybe we can be emotionally unavailable together. Who's writing your texts, Maroon 5? Oh. Kidding. We can go out. Are you asking me out? I'm down for whatever. Yeah, same. Cool. Sounds good. So, tomorrow? Or we can do whenever. Yeah, I can do whenever and I can do whatever. I don't care what we do. Yeah, me neither. We can do whatever and we can do it whenever. Does that work for you? Yeah, that definitely works. Great. Whatever, whenever. Cool. Whatever, whenever. GIF of Michael Scott dancing. That's good. Office GIF? This person isn't gay. <laughs> Please welcome back to the show our very good friend, the one, the only, Billy Eichner, everybody. time to be sitting here next to you. You co-wrote this film, yeah. you star in this film. Yeah. Um, and, and this is a rom-com mm -hmm. where, you know, the leads are two gay men. Mm -hmm. Give us a little synopsis for anybody who might not know. Uh, Bros is uh, the first gay rom-com ever released by a major studio. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's also produced by Judd Apatow and co-written with Nick Stoller. Those guys have made some of the funniest movies ever, Bridesmaids and 40-Year-Old Virgin and Knocked Up and Trainwreck and Forgetting Sarah Marshall. But this is the first time they've ever made a movie like that, but about a gay couple. Um, yeah. And uh, it is long overdue, but I'm so excited about it. And it's basically about, I play Bobby Lieber, who's a podcaster at the beginning of the movie and then gets a job working on the board of what will be the first LGBTQ history museum in New York City, which leads to a lot of infighting among various <laughs> members of my community. <laughs> um, and then uh, Bobby's a guy who prides himself on not needing anyone, not wanting to be in a romantic relationship. And then he meets Aaron, who he was texting with, played by the wonderful Luke McFarlane, who's so good in the, the movie. Film. Um, and they're both guys, they've been out their whole lives, they're very sexually active, but both of them, it's almost like they're in a competition to see who can be a more emotionally unavailable, uh, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and the, as, but they fall for each other, they fall in love unexpectedly, and we, we watch these two guys who really pride themselves on not needing love fall in love and what happens uh, when they have to let their guard down. You know, I was telling you backstage, it works so wonderfully as a super funny rom-com. Yeah. Like, it has Thank all you. the classic elements you love. And then every now and then, there's moments where you remember that it's also historic in mm -hmm. the fact that it's covering something that's never been covered. You've been doing screenings all over the country. Yeah. Uh, you went to TIFF. At those screenings, do you feel the audience is having that reaction as well? It must be so important to people. It's... Yeah, yeah. TIFF is the Toronto International Film Festival, which usually doesn't take romantic comedies yeah. like this, you know? And that was amazing. And what's also incredible is that, you know, Nick and I, you don't sit down to write a historic scene. Sure. <laughs> you don't sit down to write a gay movie. We just wanted to make a hilarious movie. And what I think we've forgotten, partially because of COVID, and it's just, we don't get many comedies like this in a movie theater anymore. You know, I don't know why. I grew up loving When Harry Met Sally and Moonstruck and and Sleepless in Seattle, and, and, and You've Got Mail, and you know, all these great movies. And, um, and uh, I think people have forgotten how much fun it is to sit in a movie theater with hundreds of other people and laugh together. You know, it really is, it's a feel-good movie, and I, that's such a joyful experience, and I'm so glad bros will give that to people again. And uh, having written it, I'm assuming you pulled a lot from your own personal experiences. Mm -hmm. what, were, what were things from your own life that were important for you to get into the script? Oh, God. I mean, all that passive-aggressive stuff over <laughs> texting. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is what I mean. Like, we've had audiences who are mostly straight watch the movie. We have audiences that are more LGBTQ. But these are things anyone who's ever been single in the past 15 years can relate to. Yeah. You know, because dating apps and, and, and texting and sexting, it's driving everyone crazy because it's, it's allowed everyone to be passive aggressive and non committal. And it's dri driven me insane many times with guys like the one that Luke plays in the movie. But this, is this true that you got, you've been kicked off Tinder twice? Yes, Seth, I have. <laughs> 
I not only am the, it's not, I'm not only the maker of the first gay rom-com from a major studio, I've also been kicked off of Tinder <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah. Which is hard to do, they're but, pretty forgiving. Let me, <laughs> let me explain why, I didn't yeah. do anything wrong. I, you know, I'm like everyone else, I'm just trying to be a normal person, like meeting people, so I joined Tinder, but then people recognize me, they don't think it's me. They think it's someone pretending to be me. Right, so they report my account, and Tinder thought they were doing the right thing, and they, they booted me twice. <laughs> and then I, I complained about it, and then they sent me a care package. <laughs> Imagine how depressing it is <laughs> when you're a 44-year-old single man getting a care package from Tinder yeah. that had literally a T-shirt that said, world's greatest single. <laughs> It, there was like a mug that was like single, but loving it. <laughs> and, it was like, and by the way, you know, shout out to Tinder. Uh, I, the thought was very nice, but it was honestly the most depressing <laughs> gift I've ever received. <laughs> um, and bros very much draws on experiences like that. Um, I have a lot more to ask you. Yeah. Uh, we will be right back with more from Billy Eichner after this.